Hi, and welcome to question 10 of the 2022 uh, paper two for the Leaving Cert Ordinary Level Maths. Okay, so as always, if you want to copy the notes I'm working off, just send me an email to shanetroy at gmail.com. Now, question 10 is the last question of the paper, and it looks like this would be, I suppose, statistics and hypothesis testing, which has came up every year for the last number of years. And let's get stuck in. A survey was carried out to investigate the amount and type of exercise that adults in Ireland are taking in 2022. This survey was carried out on a small sample of adults in Ireland. Actually, I, should, I put in the word small, on a sample of adults in Ireland. Now, the reason I'm saying that is a sample is, by its very nature, the smaller the sample, the more varied the results, the less you can entrust them. A census of the population is where you ask everybody, as much as you possibly can, and that's the gold standard. But they're very, very, very expensive. And different questions over the years may focus in on the difference between census and sample. Okay, and I'm sure at some stage we're going to have to worry about the sample size. Now, part A says, write down one advantage and one disadvantage of carrying out a survey on a sample instead of a population. Okay, they're going to actually assess that right now. So look, there's loads of advantages, okay? Uh, a survey, advantage of it is that it's cheap, okay? Um, like easy to accomplish. Um, if you are doing a, a, a census, you have to hire like, like it's not just like five or six people because they have to go around to deliver the census forms, to collect them, to help people to do it. So it's a massive operation. And then all the information has to be collected, input it to a database. Whereas a survey of let's say a thousand people is much simpler to do. Like you, could, you could probably do it yourself, okay? Um, it just take time but the more people you have. But there's a census of the population of Ireland, which is like four or five million people, whatever, uh, because it's just much more complicated. So it's cheap, easy to accomplish. Okay. Now, a disadvantage is, I suppose the data um, has more error or more chance of error. Now, I'm going to see what I said in the next thing. Now, in the notes here, I've just added one more thing, and that's maybe you could stretch it out to sampling bias. If I choose a sample, how do I choose them? If it's the population, I'm, I'm doing this everybody, so I'm not sampling. If I'm taking a sample, is it just people who answer the phone if it's a telephone survey? Or people who, who um, have post addresses? Am I missing out on people who are younger or older? There's just, you know, inten there's maybe unintentional biases. Or maybe I have, I only like people who are similar to me and I'm a middle-aged white male, so I only survey middle-aged white males, okay? Or whatever, and that is not representative of the population, okay? So the data from anything is really important. And if we're making a judgment, I come from a science background, it should be based on data and a correct interpretation of the data. And biases can creep in um, to our own thinking and change how we view the world, okay? And that's not what science is. Science is, in fact, the opposite of that. Now we'll go here to part B, part one. A random sample of 1,500 people took part in the survey. And Usually 1,000 people is the minimum you'd want. If you're doing a poll for politics or whatever, usually they'll tell you the sample size. And if you see a sample of like 10, 100 people, I wouldn't take that survey seriously at all. If it's got a million people, I'm like, okay, we're talking now. Um, 1,500 is, yeah, for practicality purposes, the, you'll see that the margin of error is fairly small. And we can look at that in a second. There is a formula for margin of error, okay? Um, now, margin of error is equal to 1 over the square root of n. Now, n is the number of people participating in the sample. So in this case, it's 1 over the square root of 1,500. Um, now, i put that to the calculator just to double check that it is 2.6%. Now, we always have to remember that if we're doing a percentage, we have to multiply by 100. So 1 over the square root of 1,500 gives me point zero point two five blah, 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 whatever. Multiply by 100 to get a percentage. And I get 2.581. Okay, so that's 2.581. Now, correct one doesn't place. The, five, or the 8 is what matters. Okay, so that looks at the number prior to it, and I get the 2.6%. Okay, that's that. Now, part two says 71% of the sample said that they walk for recreation. Find the number of people from the sample who said that they walk 
for recreation. This is very easy. So it's 1,500 people. I want to get 71% of that. It's always worth remembering that 71% is the same thing as 71 over 100, which in decimal form, but the same thing as 0 0.71. So whichever way you want to do it, okay, I'm going to use the calculator. So it's 1,500 multiplied by 0 0.71 gives me 1,065, okay, so equal to 1,065 people. Okay, it doesn't, it's not striking anything wrong with me, 71 is almost three quarters of the people, 1,065, yeah, that seems right, okay, so just check the answer, yeah, that's cool. Now, part um, B, part three, says use the percentages given in B1 and B2 to write down a 95% confidence interval. So we need a percentage of 2.6 and 71%, where the two percentages in parts one and two, and, and writing, even writing down those numbers should get you an attempt. I, I don't know the marking scheme for 2022, um, but generally right, even writing down the numbers would get you something, or definitely using them would, would get you the attempts. So again, the question is saying, use the percentages given in B part one and B part two to write down a 95% confidence interval for the percentage of all adults in Ireland who walk for recreation. So 95% interval is basically within, and I just took a second there to pop in this um, infographic I found from the internet. So in essence, all this infographic is saying is that whatever my scenario is, I'm 95% confidence interval is the margin of error lower than it and the margin of error higher than it. And that's what 95% confidence interval would be, okay? Um, if it's a 99% confidence interval, it would be just a, a, a slightly different thing. So we were told it was 71%, okay? So it's going to be plus the margin of error of 2.6%, and it's going to be minus the margin of error of 2.6%. Now, if the calculation is done on the next page, and as soon as they write this, like they have the P hat, whatever. Actually, I haven't done the hat thing. Um, 71 plus 2.6 is 73.6. 71 take away 2.6 is 68.4. So there's a 95% confidence that the number of people walking would be between these two numbers. Okay. Um, because again, the sample size is small, so there's a, a, a large margin of error. The bigger that number is. Okay, so I probably didn't do this earlier with the calculator. We had the margin of error was one over the square root. Now we said 1,500, if I made that 15,000, okay, that's a much smaller margin of error. Change that to a percentage uh, by multiplying by 100, there's a 0.8% chance that, I'm uh, sorry, 0.8%, 0 0.8 margin of error, okay. So the bigger the, the sample, the smaller that error. That's basically what the margin of error is. Now, part four is the dreaded um, uh, hypothesis testing, okay? And I suppose we all struggle with it to our own extent. It's, as long as you're consistent, you should have a fairly good time of it. Let's read through the question. According to the 2019 Irish Sport Monitor Report, 65% of the adults in Ireland walked for recreation. Okay, so this particular publication, whatever, are given a different figure than... than, than um, 71%. Carry out a hypothesis test, okay, at the 5% level of significance to find out if this figure of 65% has changed in 2022 based on the results of the above survey. Clearly state your conclusion and give a reason for your calculation. So our hypothesis is, okay, and they usually call that HO, is equal to 65%. Now, the alternative of a hypothesis, which usually is the HA is often how it's denoted, is that it's not equal to 65%. Okay, so we have to look then at, now, is 65% between our range? Okay, we, ha we got from part three. Um, and it's not. So I could rewrite that statement, okay, um, 68.4 less than or equal to P is less than or equal to 73.6. I can say 65%, um, I suppose, does not fall within 
the 5% significance. Excuse my bad writing. Um, and the conclusion is that we reject the null or the hypothesis. We reject, you've just said hypothesis there, we find. We reject the null hypothesis, if I can spell this right. Okay. Um, yeah, that should be enough. I should probably should um, and, and conclude that the 65% has changed in 2022. Which should try to be as specific as you possibly can. Hypothesis testing is, it's, how would I put this? It's very tricky. Um, it's hard to, and statistics is like this. It's often counterintuitive. But from another perspective, the questions are the same, just different numbers. So if you've practiced it, it's a, it's a situation of, um, if you go back over it, and um, you have your margin of error, okay, they are, they've asked you to get a percentage here, but usually it's margin of error, okay, then the confidence interval, which you use that figure then to get the um, hypothesis test. If you're picking up a few marks here and there, and even things like writing out the figures you have, try do something. If you're not sure what to do, do something. And you, you may or may not get, if you got this statement here about the, the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis, that would get you marks, okay? If, even if you didn't get anything, any of the rest of it. Now that's the answer in the notes. Okay, I think everything's fine there. Now, um, part C says, assume that 20% of adults in Ireland jog for recreation. Now, 20%, okay, probability is the same thing as 0 0.2. Probability always scores between 0 and 1. 0 is can't happen, 1 is definitely will happen. So 0 0.2 is, you know, if there was a spectrum, okay, you're talking, eh, somewhere along there, it's one-fifth of the way across, if you look at it from another perspective. Now it says three adults are picked at random. This is going to be a tricky one. Find the probability that exactly one of these adults jogs for recreation. So that's the probability that you have a person who jogs, okay, and jogs and not jog. Okay, so let me just see if that's right. Now, if somebody jogs or not jogs, that means that 80% of people don't jog, okay, which is 0 0.8. And the, that's everybody. You either jog or don't jog, okay? Um, and that's 0.2 and 0.8 is the, is the one. That's everybody. So the word in probability, R, means you add, okay, whereas the word and bloody right, means multiply. So in the sense I've already dealt with this to a certain extent, what's the probability that the, the first person jogs and the second person jogs and the third person doesn't jog? Now, that's just one of the possibilities here. This is where I would fall down sometimes. You also think, um, or you could look at a probability that a person, the first person jogs and the second person doesn't jog, J, and the third person jogs. Now, or it could be the probability that the first person doesn't jog and the second person jogs and the second person jogs. Now, there's a lot of things going on here. The pro if I wrote the probabilities out, okay, that's the probability that jog is 0.2 times 0.2 times 0.8. That's this first one here. Now I'm multiplying because of the and. Now R is add, so I add that to the probability. So the second one here is that they jog, so 0.2 times not jog, which is 0.8, times jog, which is 0.2. Or, so I add, the probability that the first person doesn't jog, 0.8, times jogs, 0.2, times jogs, 0.2. Now, that's a big calculation, but it's doable, okay? And I have it done in the notes, okay? 
So I'm trying to write that out, um, hopefully clearly. And this is where I would always fall down is I wouldn't necessarily cop the exactly. You know, in, in an exam where you're under pressure, time, all that kind of stuff, uh, I could easily have just not cop that. I, I have a problem with probability and my own thinking. It's sometimes it's counterintuitive. But practice makes perfect. So I, I kind of recognize this question. It's not as simple as my first appear. Okay. Now, the calculation I got was uh, 0.384. And it's worth pointing out that this is the same number here. So in a sense, it's just three times the first one. Okay. And you're accounting for the fact that the, the order of them, in a sense, matters. That's not really the right way of phrasing it. But now, does 0.384 make sense to me? Okay. Um, yeah, it's between zero and one. So it's, it's, it's if it was bigger than one or negative, something's gone wrong. Okay. Um, you definitely get the attempt by even acknowledging that 20% is 0.2. You might jump up to the, um, or, or get the attempt from a different perspective by working out that 0.8, the people who don't jog. And then it's how far can you get in this um, problem solving here? And again, practice makes perfect. You have to account for everybody and the order of them matters, okay, in, in that sense. Right, that's question 10, part C. Um, now, question 10, part D and E, okay, we look at question 10, part D first. Sinead is joining a gym. She will be able to use the gym and also go to classes. Okay, um, she's in a gym. She'll be able to use the gym and also go to classes. She could pay for individual classes at six euro per class. And she estimates that there is a 30% chance she will go to no classes in the year. 60% chance she will go to one class a week, so 52 classes in a year. 10% chance she will go to two classes a week, so 104 classes a year. Use these figures to work out the expected value of the cost of the classes for a year. So we often use this uh, E of X okay, for the expected value. In a sense, it's a weighted average, okay? So there is a formula for this, okay? And that's the sum of the data times the probability, okay? Now, there's three scenarios here. The 30% is 0.3, um, and there's no classes. So um, that X is the number of classes, okay? So it's 0 times 0 0.3, so 30% is the same thing as 0.3 in probability. The sum of means we add them all. Okay, that's what that symbol there means, sigma. It's um, one class per week, so 52 classes in the year. So 52 times 60% uh, is 0 0.6. Plus the last one is 104 classes. 104 um, times, there's a 10%, which is 0 0.1. So that's a calculator job, and I have it done on the next page. Okay, so that's that, and that's that, and that's that. And I got... Um, a value of 249.6 euros is the expected value of what uh, the Sinead would be paying. Okay. Now, the last one there, uh, part E, says there are two price plans for the gym, uh, silver and gold. Um, and the price below is for silver plan, you get 420 for the year and you pay six euro per class. Or you have the 670 for the year and all classes are free. Then it says work out the least number of classes that Sinead would have to go to in a year so that the gold plan would cost less than the silver plan. There's probably different ways of approaching this, but the way this um, occurred to me was if I have the gold take away the silver cost, so 670 take away 420 gives me a value of 250. So if you're choosing the silver plan, you have to pay for six euro per class. Now the question then is, how many six euros in 250? And that's what I've done here. And I got 41.66. Now, there's no such thing as 0.66 of a class, okay? So you'd round up, you're in that class, that's the 42nd class, okay? And I got the 42 classes. Now, that's a tricky one. And I've seen in the marketing scheme, people use an inequality to, to work it out. And that's fine, you know? Um, and in a sense, and you could have written an inequality like this. Um, the f when is the 420 
plus six times number of classes greater than the 670. This is inequality, so I can get rid of the 420 by taking it away from both sides. Okay. And they're going to cancel. You're left with 6n is greater than, now that's the 250. And then I go, I want to find n, so I need to divide this by 6 to cancel the 6. Do it once, I do it both sides. And I end up then with the n is equal to 42 conclusion as well. Two different ways of approaching it. There's no right or wrong. Um, it's whatever way uh, hits your brain at the time. Now, question 10 here has been, it's, it's a fairly tricky question. I wouldn't be the best on expected value. Um, and I just had to kind of um, look up the formula. It's not given the math tables as far as I'm aware. I just had a quick check there and I, I couldn't see it. I didn't think it was, but I just double checked in the, in the, the math tables. So um, that's through the end of question 10. Um, challenging question, like I said, but give it your best shot. Try to pick up the attempts. Um, if you practice the questions, it can be a pretty good one for the consistency of the question, especially the hypothesis testing. So leave it at that and see you in the next paper.